Well, hello, gang. Here we is again, and um, I got to tell you, I'm really excited about this one. For years and years and years, I've been cooking pork. Love that pork, pork chops, pork tenderloin. And for years and years and years, I did exactly what all you guys do. I cooked it too much because we've, we were told, we were told that it can't be pink inside, that it's got to be done. It's like chicken, right? Because if it is, then we're all going to get sick and die. Well, I'm getting a lot braver these days. <laughs> Anywho, the pork board has said, stop doing that. It's supposed to be pink in the middle. It's supposed to be a little around 140, 145. And then when you do that, it's so juicy and tender. It's called a pork tenderloin. It should be tender. And we're so used to tough pork and it shouldn't be that way. There's a pork board. Pork board. Can you imagine telling people, what do you do for a living? I'm on the pork board. I'm on the board of pork. There's pork and there's a board. And I'm on both. Who knew there was a pork board? Anyway, so the, the, the masters of pork have said, stop overcooking your pork. Put it at around 140, 145 degrees Fahrenheit inside. And that's juicy and tender and safe and gorgeous. So we have a pork tenderloin. And we are going to cook it. We're going to cook it in the oven. We're going to reverse sear it. If you haven't heard of that one, you're going to learn something new too. And we're going to put an amazing rub and an amazing sauce on it. If you follow my Instagram and Facebook, you saw I cooked it the other night. It is fantastic. Let's cook a little pork. Okay. I am on the pork board. I'm the CEO of the pork board. Can you imagine? Okay, so let's, let's do our rub. Okay, we're gonna start with some smoked paprika. This is gonna be fun. I, I have to, I like taking these things off because it just gets in my way. So let's just do this. Smoked paprika, about that much. Let's do some chili powder, about the same. There you go. Here's a bit of an unusual one. Celery seed adds great flavor. S&P. Now, uh, what I've done here is, and I do this for a lot, I, I, I just combine salt and pepper into one little container like that. Two parts salt, one part pepper. Just throw it in there and just shake it all up and it just makes it easy. So then all I got to do is just do this and boom, S&P is done. And then finally, we're going to throw in a tablespoon or more, eh, just a little bit more of brown sugar. And of course, we just got to mix it all up. I think the pork board would be very happy with this rub. Okay, there we go. Oh. Lord, help us all. Help us. Help us with the pork board. Oh, woo. Okay. We're just going to lather this sucker up. Where's my olive oil? I like putting a little olive oil on the pork tenderloin. By the way, if sometimes this pork, these pork tenderloins have a lot of fat on them, I know fat's supposed to be, you know, flavor and stuff, but if it's too much, you just take it off. This one didn't. This one had, I felt, just kind of the right amount a fat on it. Sometimes uh, pork tenderloins will have like a big, long, thin, white skin on it. I definitely take that off. All right, so here we go. We are just going to lather this stuff on. Just love on that little baby like that. That's right. That's my little baby. My little pork baby. Flip her over. Same thing on the other side. Pick the sucker up, get all that love and goodness on it, just like this. All right, I think that's pretty good. Look at that. Look at that. That is something you want to just chow down on right now. Well, we got to cook it first. Okay, okay, now we're going to transfer it over to this little baby here. Get rid of that. And then what we're going to do is I have a, one of these little 
thermometers that I use a lot where I just stick this sucker right into the fattest part of the pork tenderloin and it tells me what the temp is. You can set the temp, set an alarm with it. Something like this is really good to have. So let's see the thickest part. I'll just take it right in there. That's pretty good. Turn this bad boy on and I've set it. I'm going to set it to 145. Now it's going in. So I just stick that thing in. There's my thermometer. And I'll just put my thermometer right there. So I can come check it. Okay, by the way, the oven is at 375. I don't know how long it takes. I really have never even paid attention to it. I just pay attention to the thermometer about, you know, the temperature. And then when it's about 140, I, I bring it out. I bring it out at 140 because it's going to continue to cook once you get it out. And we're going to reverse sear it. What does that mean? Well, as you notice, I didn't put a sear on it at all before I put it into the oven, right? So it's got none of that grill stuff on the outside. So what I'm going to do is as soon as I bring it out, I'm going to throw it onto the grill that's on top of the stove and I'm going to sear it for, gosh, maybe a minute, maybe a little bit more than a minute, but that's it. All I want is I just want that sear crust on the top, on all sides, and then we're done. That's it. So that extra five degrees is going to happen during, during that process. So while we're here, we're going to make the sauce that goes over this. Now this sauce is to die for. I promise you, it's amazing. We're going to start off with honey. I don't know, about that much. Some soy sauce. I don't know, about that much. Some Dijon, just a little bit goes a long way. And this depends on you. Cayenne pepper. Okay, look, you can make this a spicy pork ten a barbecue pork tenderloin. You can make this not spicy. You can make it a little bit of spicy. That depends on you with uh, the cayenne pepper here. So I'm gonna make it medium which is about like that. And got to mix that sucker up. Okay, it's about to hit 140. I forgot to look at the clock. I think it's been around 30 minutes. It's somewhere around there, so don't hold me to it, but in the neighborhood. All right, boom, just hit 140. Let's do this, pull it out. Look at that bad boy right there. Let's take the thermometer out. Now, reverse, got to reverse sear it, right? With some tongs, we're going to throw it right on this grill, which is at 500 degrees. This is going to get loud and smoky. I have to turn on the fan a little bit, so I'll talk above it. I'm going to let it sweat, get nice in Siri. No, not, you know, not the phone Siri, the pork Siri. Is there a pork Siri? I wonder, I don't know. I wonder what Siri would say if you asked her what temperature to eat pork. Hey Siri, what temperature should you eat pork? 145. <laughs> okay, let's get the sides here. I want to get it all nice and seared up. You can see the, the marks now. See this? Now it looks like you've, you've grilled it, you've browned it, so to speak. All right, that's good enough. There we go, gang. Are you kidding me? Look at this. Are you looking at this? Are you seeing this? This is amazing. Now we got our glaze. It even gets more fun. Got a little paintbrush here. Let's just paint our glaze on. Look how beautiful that looks. Splattering it all over me as I do it. Let's flip her around. Do the other side. Just makes it glisten. Glisten with love. Oh, Lord, help us all. We are not worthy. Now that 
as pork tenderloin. All right, let's cut into this sucker. This is the exciting part right here for me. I'm telling you. Let's get into this right there. A little bit of an angle in. Holy cow. Do you see that? Watch this. There's juice coming out of it. Look at that. Because it's juicy. It's pork tenderloin. It's supposed to be juicy. Whoo, doggy. Look this oh I just I gotta have a little nibble before I plate this sucker I just have to sign me up for the pork board baby Woo! now look I don't have a steak knife because I don't need one regular knife watch this Look at that. In that juice. Do yourself a favor. When you go to the grocery store, by the way, pork tender always come in that packet, right? Which is perfectly fine. And like I say, just trim off a little bit of the fat, whatever fat you don't like, and go from there. If you can get a pork tenderloin from the butcher in the back of the store or something like that, do that, because it's always a little bit more tender. Either way, with this particular rub and this sauce, you cannot go wrong. Get yourself some mashed potatoes, a little cream corn maybe. I'll link that below. You can look at that recipe. Come back and see me, gang. This is fun. Bye.